What's up guys, it's non-toxic, you're on toxic Linux YouTuber and today I'll be reacting to a video by DistroTube on why people use Arch Linux. There are over a thousand distributions. I was 21 years old and I had basically programming half my life. Today I wanted to talk to you guys about evolving as a Linux user. Because sometimes people ask me how I ended up on things like Arch Linux or Vim or Emacs or how did I get into the terminal and things like that and you know, one of the things with Linux there's typically two types of users there's those that they just want to install something quick and easy and use it as is and they never want to look under the hood and figure out how it works and then there's the other group of Linux users that is the tinkerers they do want to know how everything works they want to take things apart and put it back together again and because you know, Linux is full of these nerds that like to tear things down and build it again. And that's why so many of us gravitate toward, uh, I guess, not user-friendly distributions like Arch Linux and the hundreds of distros based on Arch Linux or Gen 2 and the various distributions based on Gen 2 and things like that, Slackware. As I was curious about tinkering with computers in my teens, I personally understand what it feels like to want to take computers apart and put them together again and understand why they operate the way they do so for me going into this looking at the linux philosophy makes a lot of sense i started off with ubuntu i went to linux mint um from off of ubuntu then i think i went on to some other Debian based distributions stuck with Debian now I'm on Linux Mint Debian edition I've trialed other operating systems I've done a graphical install for one of the Arch distributions um, one of which I've featured on this channel which I did some gaming in but the reason why we ultimately pursue what we pursue in computing is because we're curious about how it works and we want to see more than just the interface that's designed for us and just put out there for us. That many of us use Arch Linux is because for what we do using Arch or an Arch based Linux distribution is much much easier for us than using something like Ubuntu or Linux Mint or OpenSUSE. Why is that? Well when you're new you're not going to be doing a lot of crazy things, right? Like compiling your own software, doing extreme customizations of your desktop or window manager and things like that. Typically, you just want something that's really easy and quick to install and looks good out of the box, and then you're not going to touch it, you know, when you're a brand new user. And that's okay. Once you get more advanced, though, you really want to build your own system, right? And it becomes very limiting when you use something like Ubuntu or Mint. In the vast majority of cases, Arch Linux users are Linux users who've tried several other distributions to see what works, what they like and what they don't, but they've decided to settle on Arch Linux. Since Arch Linux is open source, it gives users the freedom to create their own distributions off of the source code for Arch Linux. I have a distribution timeline over here and as you can see there are many distributions which have come off of Arch Linux, one of which being Manjaro which I have a video review on and you can see that there are many others. Because like the Ubuntu desktop is really almost like a meta package a collection of things and sometimes it's really hard to separate some of the stuff you don't want on the system from the stuff you do because of just the way these user-friendly distributions are built they package things in such a way it's really again it's it's designed for the brand new user but for those of us that want to do more than just the real basics ubuntu is hard it's frustrating to use i mean it's it, it, it i save so much time using arch based distributions compared to ubuntu 
Arch Linux users aim to optimize their desktops to run as efficiently and securely as possible. The first way they do that is by writing programs themselves or looking at the code of programs that other people have written. The second way is by the fact that Arch Linux is a rolling release distro, which means that it has updates as soon as every day or even multiple in a day or uh, every few days or every week. Whereas the distro, distro that I'm on, which is the Linux Mint Debian edition, it has updates every maybe few days, but the bigger updates come every year or couple months. So the updates that may come would be for software that, that is on the distro but the distro itself is only going to be updated every couple months or year. Imagine if you had Windows, for example, you go from Windows 10 to Windows 11. If that stays for a couple years and then every month or few weeks, etc. is when you get the bigger updates where you need to restart the PC. The Arch philosophy, they talk about Arch Linux being simple. Right, Arch Linux, the Arch philosophy is all about simplicity. And a lot of people think, well, that's Arch is not simple because it's not user friendly. Well, simple doesn't mean user friendly. Simple means everything is simple by design, right? All the pieces have been separated, you know, into their smallest components, basically. And you pick and choose the parts you want and you build that thing the way you want to make it look. First and foremost, let's take what he said with a grain of salt. This is a guy who's very smart, into his head, and knows his stuff. When he says it's easier, what he means is also that there's less mental hassle and mental frustration of putting what he wants to do onto the screen, as opposed to the process required to get that idea from his brain onto the screen. Another point to add is that Arch Linux forums and sites tend to be very clear-cut and direct. If I were to head on to archlinux.org, as you can see, this is the homepage. It has packages, forums, a wiki, bugs, security, a UR, and a page on downloading Arch Linux. If you head to the installation guide, you'll find a bunch of details there split into many different sections. Arch Linux is considered one of the hardest distributions to learn to use. However, the information available on it it's very clear because as a community, they support each other. The action is really these days Arch, right? Arch dominates the, the desktop Linux world, all the Arch-based distributions. Manjaro is exploding in popularity. Arco Linux is exploding in popularity. Mainstream Arch, even though it's a, a command line install, you know, is exploding in popularity. There is a ton of people giving Arch Linux a serious try. Unless you've been living under a digital rock, you'd be aware that Steam OS is actually based off of Arch Linux. As you can see here, there are many titles available on Steam with the Steam OS distribution. If I just have a quick scroll here, you can see. And this is all based off of Arch Linux, which has the latest drivers available for computer parts, which is relevant um for a rolling release distribution which is why for gaming in particular it makes more sense to be on arch linux than to be on other distributions which are slower to release drivers for graphics cards in particular not too long ago a distribution called asahi linux which i'm not too familiar with 
has decided to make an update for Apple GPU drivers, which make it easier for Apple users to run the operating system. I'm just going to have a quick look through the web page. I'm just going to have a quick scroll through it. I'll provide the link in the description for you guys to also look at. You know, Arch Linux does not mind putting proprietary software in its repositories. So they they are not free software only purists. Now, I'm a free software zealot. But even I, as a free software zealot, don't mind them having proprietary software available for their users in their repositories. What I hate is Linux distributions that install proprietary software out of the box on those distributions. You know, and basically they're trying to force proprietary software on their users. I don't like that. But I don't mind proprietary software being in the repos available for those that need it and want to use it. Because not everybody cares about the free software movement. I get that. Just to clarify, proprietary software is software which isn't free, or sometimes is free, but the code isn't available publicly to view. So you may not know how it's made or much about the servers behind how the information is stored. However, open source software is software which is available publicly for people to look at. I think, again, I think we're starting to see this real shift in desktop Linux where really what used to be an Ubuntu dominated game is really now dominated by Arch Linux and I love it. I love it because Arch Linux of course is a community distribution too. It's not corporate backed. There's no company really calling the shots. It's all about us, the community, building something great, and I think it's a model that that works. If you weren't already aware, some of the software that comes installed by default on Ubuntu isn't open source, it's proprietary. A point to note is that not all software that's free to download is necessarily open source, although all software which is open source is free to download. Ubuntu is managed by a company, however Arch Linux is shared by a community. I'm also going to have a look at another one of his videos, don't upgrade to Windows 11, upgrade to Linux instead. Are you a Windows 10 user and are you considering upgrading to Windows 11? Maybe you're considering upgrading to Windows 11 because you've seen the screenshots and the videos that Microsoft has put out and you think the Windows 11 desktop is really attractive. If so, I strongly urge you to consider giving Linux a try. Many Linux desktops are absolutely stunning in their beauty, such as the Linux desktop I'm currently showcasing. This is the Deepin Linux distribution. Windows 10 pales in comparison, and even the upcoming Windows 11 doesn't compete with some of the modern Linux desktops. In fact, Windows 11 looks as if it's simply playing catch up to Linux. As you can see, Linux OS's aren't nearly as aesthetically outdated as they used to be. You probably have noticed that Windows 11 is adding some really nice blurring effects to its menu and its panel. Deepin has had this kind of blurring for years, as well as many other Linux desktops. A buzzword you often hear nowadays is dark mode, which is really just the ability to change your application themes from a light theme to a dark theme, while Windows and Mac are just now addressing this. Linux has allowed its users to set dark themes for nearly 30 years. In Deepin, you simply open the control center and go to personalization and then choose dark. Do you want to change the opacity of the menus and the panel? You can do that as well. Set it to 1.0 for fully opaque or to zero for fully transparent or anywhere in between. Some of the applications themselves have opacity settings that you can adjust, such as the terminal application. The customization options are endless on Linux. I think his dark theme mention is relevant as a lot of software are beginning to incorporate that now. 
Probably the biggest advantage of using Linux is the freedom given to the user. The operating system is yours to do as you please. You can add or remove software, you can change desktop environments, you can even change from one Linux distribution to another. You have that freedom. Proprietary operating systems like Windows 11 are freedom restricting. You do not own your operating system when you run Windows. Microsoft owns it. They are merely allowing you to use it. Even if you aren't into tinkering, that's still something which you can understand. This, that's still something which you can comprehend to use, to choose carefully about what software and electronics you choose to use. That's the end of the video. Don't forget to leave a like, comment and subscribe. Thank you.